When I first started using this work truck, my philosophy was to try to have tools for every conceivable job on board. But I've never really done a tour of the whole thing packed and loaded with all my gear. So that's what this video is. A tour of my work truck and I'm gonna show you all the tools I've got on board. All right, so up top I've got uh, traction skid plates, two on the left and two on the right. Those are just uh, for the many times I get the truck stuck in mud. And then I've got four ladders, two long extension ladders and then two self-standing ladders. And like you'd imagine, uh, the two extension ladders, one's longer than the other. Same deal with the self-standing ladders. One is, you know, six footer and the other's a 12 footer. And then in the middle here, I've got my miter saw stand. That thing is killer, and as you see, I run it on my chop saw. And then when I put this rack on, I put one of these storage tubes on, thinking it was kind of cool and I might use it for longer stuff. Yeah, the tube just hasn't got a lot of use. At one point I had my fishing rod in there, but I just haven't used it for stuff. All right, so without a doubt, that roof rack is just essential on the truck. I use it all the time, every day. Occasionally, I've used it as a work stand, so uh, driven under a project, and a couple guys can stand on top and work on it. And I've also just carried all kinds of other stuff on top of the truck. All right, let's go inside. All right, so this is my real like go-to area. I've got my tool belt here. This is like all my go bag stuff, everything I use on a daily basis. It's kind of a smaller, lighter one, and I kind of like it. And then I just, on this deck here, I end up putting just miscellaneous stuff I'm using that day. So, like the other day, I had a concrete job and I had to bust out some stairs. So I had my sledgehammer. You know, whatever I'm using that day, I'll just kind of put in this open area. I've also got just a bag, knee pads, gloves, extra batteries, things like that. And then longer stuff, I've got my four foot level and a painting stick. And the one thing I do on this truck is I just squirrel stuff away wherever I can. So up top, I've got a couple of clamp and a broom. And then over here, more clamps, a saw for small, real light work uh, pruning jobs, a wheel for measuring out, you know, long distances on rough ground. And then in here, marking tape, buried line electrical tape, marking string for doing like uh, site marking and trash bags. And then over here, scrolled away even more, uh, a couple different kinds of drywall, half inch drywall, three quarter inch drywall, a sheet of particle board. Sometimes I'll have plywood over here. You know, if you're gonna do drywall repair jobs, you gotta carry at least a little bit of drywall with you. Some of this is green board and some of that is just standard. Then over on this side, uh, extension cords, 250 footers, some uh, brooms just for sweeping up, red flag for marking long load. And then I always carry a splitter in case I'm gonna plug in on a job and run more than one tool at a time. I've also got an inverter back there that allows me to power uh, this cord and run like light tools off of it or more often just charge my uh, portable tool batteries. So at the very back of my slider, I've got my portable table saw which I've only had about six, seven months, and I really like it. A lot of power, probably more power than my other table saw. I've also uh, got a fan that I always carry with me in case someone's got a leak or a wet basement or something, I can leave it at their place and dry it out. Uh, then I've got my miter saw. That's the one that goes on the stand up top. And uh, air compressor. Again, this is a portable air compressor. Not the best compressor, but I like it because I can drag it with me places. And it's actually run pretty well. Similarly, a small shop vac. I use this thing all the time, not only just to clean up, but sometimes to, you know, suck out a drain or like pull, the other day I was pulling busted concrete out of a drain. Uh, portable shop vac. And then this tool bag here, I don't actually carry this with me, but it's just kind of like backup tools. So occasionally, if I need something else in my kit, I'll bring my hammer over or my masonry hammer. Sometimes if I need a, a screw bag, I'll use this stapler, just all kinds of tools. I got backup pens in here, backup scrapers, cutting tools, drywall saws, chisels, scissors. This is all different wrenches that sometimes, wrenches and pliers sometimes come in handy. Some backup electrical testers. I've got a laser thermometer in here. You know, sometimes checking the temperature of concrete with small level Allen wrench, you know, all kinds of stuff. 
This guy's awesome. It never leaves the truck. It's too heavy, but I will pull tools out of here and stick them in my bags. Okay, so that's the slider. All right, so these two drawers work the same way for me. In the front is the stuff I use all the freaking time, all the time. And in the back is stuff I sometimes never use or just use on a job like one week and then it you know sits for a couple weeks. So I'll just kind of walk you through what I got here. Uh, most used tool on the entire truck has got to be my, this is my impact driver and my drill. Got a backup battery here, a bunch of bits and fasteners and stuff up here. And I'm telling you, man, I use this thing more than anything else on the truck. Just probably every single job I'm using this combo pack. And then scurried away underneath it is a lot of stuff that I've kind of got to get to real quick. And you can see my organizational system. It's kind of messy as hell, but you know, it works for me. So I got my speed square. Often I carry this on my belt. Backup batteries, some lube, hole saws, uh, tape, stuff like that. And then a couple drilling related things. So I've got my step bits right here. These are awesome for drilling holes of different sizes, often in uh, hard materials like steel and aluminum. And then this is my bigger drill bit set. I don't carry this again with me very often, but every now and then I'll pull a bit out of here, break it or lose it, and then never put it back. All right, moving on into tier two. Stuff I also use all the time, but maybe not quite as much as up front. I've got my battery powered DeWalt saw, runs on my 20 volt batteries and my corded DeWalt. And then <clears throat> battery powered grinder, and you can see Porter cable. So different battery system, kind of a pain in the neck, but whatever. And a DeWalt uh, multi-tool cutter, and then a battery powered reciprocating saw. Look at that <laughs> blade, that is so dull. I gotta change that blade. All right, other miscellaneous stuff back in here. Tape, I always forget where that is, but that's where it is. And back of blades. I've also got a battery jigsaw, and I think this case has some wrenches in it. This case is all saws. I'll show you this. This one's awesome. I love this thing. All hand saws. If you don't carry hand saws in your rig, that's crazy. You gotta use these things. Pull saw, hack saw, straight up small saw. Uh, another pole saw, and then a coping saw for doing molding and stuff like that. This is a great little kit. Again, I'll bring it with me if I'm doing a carpentry job and just roll it out. Miscellaneous brushes for painting, a backup caulking gun, sandpaper for my sander, which is right here, oscillating sander. And this is my sawzall. This is my corded sawzall. So if this little dude isn't up to the task, I'll bust out my serious Milwaukee Sawzall, and this is a corded jigsaw. So we're getting into corded stuff. Again, I use less frequently, and then a couple, a couple air tools that I really seldom use. This is my big framing nailer. I'm almost always using my finish nailer or my brad nailer, and then this is the finish nailer right there. And then this little thing is great. This is my battery powered router, but dang, I've used it like three times. I just don't do that kind of fine work when I'm out on jobs usually. Uh, a backup drill that's an angle, angle drill. Nice old Makita unit. If you don't have one of these, they're great. It's got power and it'll just give you reach that you can't get with a traditional drill. And then those are some router bits. All right, now the second side is fewer tools and more fasteners. And same as the first, these are the fasteners I use the most, and that's the stuff I use the least back toward the back. All right, so uh, this is my go-to box of carpentry fasteners. Just all kinds of wood screws, construction screws, and, you know, like bigger fasteners like that. Again, stuff I use every day. The other day I was putting a roof on, I had some steel gasketed screws in there. So, you know, whatever I'm using, I'll kind of throw it in here. And this is the thing I use, again, the most for doing carpentry stuff. I do have another one of these guys that's more like specialty screws. And now that I look at this, I think to myself, do I even need this? It's got like brass screws and just stuff I almost never use. The one thing in here I do just totally value though is that I have my drywall anchors. And I use these guys all the time 
fixing railings and I don't know, just doing all kinds of stuff. And then another set of anchors. These guys will go in masonry as well as drywall. Again, specialty screws. There's some stuff in this truck I probably don't use as much, but anyway, that's one thing. And then all around here, extra fasteners, stuff that didn't end up fitting in the boxes. This is for these guys for doing cedar siding. These fit in my nail gun. More mollies and anchors. Box of roofing nails, some shims. You know, stuff like that. One badass fastener that I had left over from a job. I'll find a use for it somewhere. And then I got some wire. Underrated. Use that stuff all the time. All right, then moving back up the drawer, more fasteners. This whole thing is specialty nails. And you know, every one of these is useful at one time or another. These guys for putting in transition strips some more uh, ring shank wood screws, some roofing nails, some uh, staples for stapling on electrical lines, all kinds of finish nails. So again, stuff I use frequently. And this, these are specialty screws. Most of these are for steel. You know, sheet metal screws and self-tapping screws. These guys are concrete. You know, some little like wire brackets and things like that. And then more fasteners. I find that if you carry enough fasteners, you don't have to go to the hardware store all the time when you need something. And then I've got more stuff stuffed in here like extra shims, staples, more wire. Dang, man, this truck is a mess. All right, now this toolbox is totally key. Love this guy. This guy has like 80% of the tools and stuff I use when I'm doing an electrical job. So basically it's organized into tools on top. So I've got like my stripper here my uh, sensor, and then another stripper, some clips, stuff like that. So tools on top, and then every kind of wire nut imaginable, every kind of staple, ground screws. So I can really get through most electrical jobs just with this box. I've got a fish tape in here. I've got a tester. This is the box full of my tools for electrical jobs. You'll see in the front of the truck, I've got all my materials and supplies uh, behind the seat. All right, moving on to the back of the sliding drawer. The last couple slots, I almost never use that stuff. But right here, I've got my socket set. This is just, you know, like every socket imaginable and every extender. I've also got my extractors for getting stuff off that's stripped. So that's my socket set. Uh, and then I've got mainly right back in here, extra fasteners for my air tools. You know, when you're running air tools, you end up running through a lot of fasteners. So I've got backup air tool fasteners in here, a short level, cheater bar. And then in the very back here, pretty much cleaning supplies and an air wedge. All right, you've almost survived the tour. I got to show you all the stuff I've got stash behind the seat up front. All right, so when I first set up this truck, I thought that I'd be able to store everything I wanted in the back, um, but it was just too jammed. So I started using the back seat and it looks like a shit show. It looks that way to you, but I'm telling you there's an order to this madness and there's actually a lot of good stuff back here. So this is kind of what it looks like. A big bag of every kind of freaking caulk you can imagine. And it may look a little bit like a hoarding situation, but this is golden, man. Clear cock, white cock, uh, adhesives, stuff for bathrooms, stuff for kitchens, etc. It's all in this bag. This is like my go bag. If someone needs something sealed up or cocked, this is the bag that will do the job. Then this is my uh, concrete box. Any kind of masonry job, tools come out of here for the job. And like with everything else, it's not an extensive kit, but it will get me through most smaller concrete jobs. I've got a diamond blade saw blade. I've got my small uh, hammer. I've got a couple of trowels in here. A smaller one, a bigger one. I've got my big masonry chisels. If I'm actually on a job laying cracks, I've got my groove, groover, whatever these things are called. Again, not a full set of everything you need for a masonry job, but you can actually get by pretty well with just this kit. And then on the topic of masonry, we get to drywall. And similarly, I have the same kind of box that I use as my drywall kit. 
and this actually has everything I need for a drywall job. I don't do anything too technical. This is the knife I use for almost everything, every patch, every seam job, installing new drywall, etc. I got my flat paper tape, I got my fiber tape, I've got tools for doing inside corners, tools for doing outside corners, a few of these guys laying around, you know, the uh, abrasive sandpaper sponges, specialty fasteners when I'm doing bathroom jobs. So drywall kit, similar to the concrete one, if I have a drywall job, I just grab this toolbox and I'm good to go. A few extra drywall things, I got my, my mud bucket, another trowel and some sponges and a small bucket. All right, so if you're wondering about plumbing, this is it, this is my plumbing toolbox. This guy will get a plumbing job done. So I got two pipe wrenches, usually use those if I'm doing black pipe. You know, the rest of my plumbing toolbox is pretty much a little bit of stuff for sweating copper, but I don't even do that very much anymore. These days, it's almost all PEX. So PEX fittings, connectors, lock rings, and stuff like that. You know, I've probably used this for uh, doing copper pipe three times in the last year, like hardly at all, as opposed to the number of times I've used my PEX connector, like all, all the time, you know, all the time. So this is mainly like a PEX thing, but I do have a uh, dope for doing black pipe. And I've got some glue in here for doing PVC, for doing waistlines. And then I mentioned before that I've got some spillover up front of electrical stuff. So, you know, I've got a spool outdoor wire, a spool of 12-2 indoor wire. That's pretty much what I carry. Sometimes I'll carry 14-2 or 14-3 but I usually just carry a couple spools of wire and I can do any electrical job. And then I also carry this bad boy. You're gonna love this. Check this out. This is my electrical fittings and fixtures go bag. Every kind of switch plate, plate in here, all kinds of them. A variety of junction boxes for different situations, plastic, steel, old work, new work. And then, you know, just like a few breakers, some square D stuff, some home line stuff. If someone needs to go for a double pole, I've got a double pole. Again, my goal is not to have to do a run to the hardware store for every freaking job. So the more I can carry with me, the more I can get done. A bunch of receptacles, straight up receptacles, some switches, three-way and regular. All right, you've almost seen it all, but there's still a few more things stashed in the back of the truck. I've got some drop cloths. I've got one rubber boot, and I think there's another rubber boot over there. Two rubber boots. Uh, painting stuff. I've got paint brushes in a tray. And then stuff for the truck. Uh, pull chains, jumper cables, stuff like that. And then last but not least, hidden back behind the driver's seat, a couple more air tools. So that's my Brad nailer. And then I've got a staple nailer back in that box. All right, thanks for checking out my work truck. It's a mess. It's a total mess. But dang, does it get stuff done. I think you actually can carry tools for every single job or almost every single job. You can't carry everything. All this stuff, when I have to do my welding jobs, I end up carrying my welding rig, rig on my trailer. Same thing with big tree jobs. If I need to carry chainsaws and stuff, I end up pulling stuff out, usually pulling my miter saw out and putting my chainsaws and my tree gear in the back of the truck. So it's not everything. A lot of stuff is still in my shop, but it's a lot of stuff. All right, thanks for checking it out. I'll see you in the next video.